often tells me what's inside what to carve. I hate working with blocks, cut out blocks mm -hmm. of stone, because it, it's as if it hampers my vision of what's inside. I would much prefer to use stone that um, doesn't have those finished edges. In fact, 99% of my work with stone is, is stone that doesn't have. It, it's my preference. It's a flaw. It, 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 a square doesn't flaw. Exactly. It yeah. contains you. Yeah. And I don't like that. Yeah. Um, if you turn... Okay, we're going to turn. This is real TV. Just beautiful here. And if we had smell of it, you could smell the wood and the paint and the... This marble relief that you're seeing now is done by Georgiana Meloff. She's an artist from um, British Columbia, but she is also American born. The, the more you, time you spend with this piece, the more you see uh, carved there. Gonna back all the way up and take a, a, well, we have to do it in two sections. So we go here and a little lower. Cool. This piece is, this is the bottom piece, yeah. Beautiful dreamer. Beautiful. And Georgiana Mella is also a master wood carver. And we have three of her large wood pieces done in Madro Madrona, uh, the, the root of... I'm aiming at the, at the one in the back at the moment. Yes, that piece is titled... Um, A woman with the angel on her shoulders. Uh huh. Okay. Most of her work oh, deals like with sea imagery, mm -hmm. and this is a case in point. Uh, she tried to capture the froth of a wave. Here you can find a pelican. Here's a sea turtle. There's a water snake. There's um, a seal, and of course, always and forever, there's a human form mm -hmm. represented. Oh, it just smells so good. And her other piece, which is one of my favorites, is the Three Graces. This is truly a museum piece. Take a step and step back a little bit. Yeah. It's such dark wood. I hope the photography, you know, can bring up some of its detail. Uh, well, we, uh, how about I do it? I do some of it in sections here. That should work. Just, wow. Pretty. So, would you happen to know how long it takes? On an average, to um, to create a piece like that, it can take a year or longer. Yeah, longer. Um, because often you're not working just on one piece. Oh, really? You're working on several others. I could never do that. I can't either, but Georgiana does. Really? Yeah. When I do some, I have to finish. I'm it. committed to what I'm working on mm -hmm. right now, but uh, she's able to do that. Wow, multifaceted person. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I spotted a, a bird, a uh, per, parakeet. What's a parakeet? A cockadoo. Uh, the tropical birds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's done by Mike Holland from Montana. Mm -hmm. He also did the seagulls in flight over here. Mm -hmm. That would be here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, I of the Needle, which is bronze plate, is another piece of mine. And this is fabricated bronze. Mm-hmm. And it isn't cast. Gee. 
As you walk around the piece, it actually opens in a narrow passage so that you can view through it, and that's why it's titled I Am the Needle. Now do it. Oh, I see. Down here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look through there. There it is. Wow. It's wonderful. Let me give you a close up of the grain here. It's just, it's not grain, I don't know what you call it, metal. It's a patina. On the metal, it's created by chemical. Oh, it is? Yes. It's just fascinating. There are actually three patinas on that, so that it gives it more depth. Uh huh. Gee. Oh, here, on this is the back. Yes. The back of the. Three graces. The three graces. And you have. No matter which way you look at it, you have a... Wow. Sculpture is to be three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, look at that. Mm -hmm. Such wonderful award. These are Wellman, Valentine Wellman, figurative studies, again in chalk, and, or charcoal and Conte. Also, um, the two bronze figures that you'll see in a few moments, are works by Wellman. It is, it is glare, but we can't help that. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Now on this wall, over here, mm -hmm. these are early works of Wellman, 1950s figurative studies. Um, egg tempera and um, lithograph at the bottom. The blue mm -hmm. figure is the lithograph. The next study is um, charcoal and then an ink wash figure. And I like the lamp. Oh, the yeah. lamp was done by an artist in Oregon. And it's a crystal mm -hmm. that's been woven together. Do we have a map to play? Yeah, there is a map. Let's go show the map how to get here while we're here. Sure, we can sign map. Mm -hmm. And here are pictures of the uh, 2089 competition. This called me. This piece was the title piece of the exhibition that toured through the Ukraine and into Lithuania to Vilnius. And I'm sorry, but I've forgotten the title. Feminine Mystique, how could I ever There you go. <laughs> Feminine Mystique. And it, it was in response to questions that women in the Ukraine were asking me mm -hmm. the preceding year. They wanted to know how the feminine revolution in America affected mm -hmm. my life. For this is one of yours too, no? Yes, this is one of mine too. This is Menelaus. Yeah, you can see he, he was the husband of Helen of Troy. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to know how that feminine revolution affected my life personally and professionally. And I couldn't really express it in words, so I tried to do it visually through the images that I created and took to the Ukraine. And there were 22 of them that went. The one that you're seeing now is, did not go to the Ukraine. This is new. It's titled Barcelona. And it's images that captured my imagination when I was touring that city.
You know, um, sometimes I think about how women have a bond, a, a universe, you know, everywhere. And then I wonder why we can't get it together and stop our husbands and sons from making a war. Do you ever think about that? Well, we're still primarily a patriarchal society. I mean, globally, uh, very few women really run the, the governments or the major businesses. And the power lies there. Unless we as women take it over. That was what I meant, yeah. Yes. Why can't we just say that's enough? Let's do it this way. Well, we because have to we, we, <laughs> we haven't been to, to do that. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. No, I don't know if uh, these two figures will show. Hang on a minute. Wow. This is um, Femme Moderne. This was one of the pieces that went to the Ukraine in response to the women's questions. This is the modern woman taking hold of her life and moving forward. That's sort of what I just asked you, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> just about what you asked me. Just, well, why can't we just go forward and, we can. and change things a little bit? I'm trying to go to the back here. It's a little shaky, but you know me, we shake together here. God, I like this. Wow. And it takes you about a year per piece also? No. No. If, if I, well, the piece that I just created for Benini Sculpture Ranch took me one week. Oh, wow. And, and I was told when I initially went there by one of the men who set the piece on the bench that I couldn't possibly create that piece in a week. And my response was, I'm on schedule. I have to. I've never missed a deadline yet in my life. I haven't either. You suppose you, some of you, well, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think some of your work could be guided or channeled, or, mm -hmm. or you have help, don't you? I think we do. I think mm -hmm. we, as individuals, but particularly as artists, have a creative or spiritual guide. We have a guide, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we respond to that, and we respond to the materials of our choice. And a mine, of course, is stone. Mm -hmm. But um, it's such a powerful, enriching feeling to create. I can't imagine what it must be like to be God or the universal creator. Because I'm only a tiny part of that, but I'm so grateful for it, because uh, my life is so rich and full. Not monetarily, necessarily. None. All, all humble, all humble um, creative people are not rich monetarily. No. We are we, rich by people and creation. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons for the park. Uh, it was my gift to the community. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do believe that um, when we, we put ourselves out there and we give, more comes back to us. But that's not the primary reason for doing it. It's that I, I think we have to be and are connected to one another. And we need to share our joy. And I do that through the park and through the things that I create. Wow. Wow. 
We are now outside of the building. When I, if you hear me yelp, it's my back. 